Hi, welcome back to Sinisum. Today we are going to summarize the Indonesia's superhero movie Gundala. Warning spoilers. The movie opens up at a plant where hundreds of workers are protesting against the operation for a better pay and lower demarcation. Amidst the demurrers the factory's head addresses through a speaker and calls in some representatives of the workers' union to negotiate with the department. Hearing this the kick eventually stops and two representatives enter the department structure. Meanwhile all this is being observed by a little boy named Sanchaka who's sitting on the roof of a near structure. In the coming scene Sanchaka delays for his father Rudra, who is revealed to be one of the driving forces behind the demurrers. Sanchaka asks him why he wishes to be involved in the screams, to which Rudra replies, that one should always help others in need and fight against the injustice passing around. He further mentions that the bones who don't help others have no humanity inside them. Three days pass by but the workers who went to negotiate with the department don't return. One morning Sunchaka wakes up to the discussion between his parents, who are talking about the missing workers. However Sanchaka's mama Della tries her stylish to stop her hubby from going to the plant. She fails Rudra arrives at the plant and attacks the security forces with the help of other workers. On the other hand Sanchakai and his mama decide to check on the missing workers' house to find out the reality. Unexpectedly when they reach one of the representatives' houses they find him outside and his woman, trying to lie about his presence, realizing that it's a trap to kill her hubby. Della starts running towards the plant sorely on the way she falls and twists her leg not being suitable to walk. She requests Sanchaka to go to the plant and stop his father. Meanwhile as Rudra is fighting against the security forces, one of the workers from his group approaches him and stabs him multiple times killing him on the spot. Unfortunately when Sanchaka reaches the plant he finds his father lying dead on the bottom. The little boy breaks down and gashes and mourns his father's death. After a while he gets up enraged and plots vengeance. He holds a security guard and screams out loudly as soon as he does so a bright lightning bolt strikes him out of nowhere and throws him down breaking. The guard with great force unexpectedly all other shields present there also break in the same manner everyone is shocked to see this and when they try to examine Sanchaka's unconscious body, they're also pushed down by the lightning force. The scene also presto on a many times ahead when Sanchaka's mama tells him that she needs to visit the megacity to buy some groceries. The little boy does not want to be left alone, but he has no choice but to agree. A many days pass by but his mama still hasn't arrived home to make matters worse. Everything comestible present inside the house is finished, and Sanchaka is impelled to venture outdoors and hunt a food. In the ensuing scene Sanchaka can be seen being chased by some road boys after in violent pursuit. They eventually catch up to him and start beating him poorly, but right when they are about to smack him with a large piece of wood, another Joe named Gung arrives there and saves him. Fighting against the road boy is when Sanchaka wakes up, he finds himself sleeping inside a room with a gun sitting beside him. The ultimate tells him to be careful with street kitties and also promises to educate him some introductory way for tone defense. At night the two decide to board a train to a different megacity so that they can start a new life. Ogging using his speed and dexterity fluently, climbs on the moving train, but poor Sanchaka is left before now with no bone. To take care of him, Sanchaka starts living in the thoroughfares by performing slavish tasks on the thoroughfares. In the coming scene we see a grown-up Sanchaka running on the thoroughfares he has now started working at a paper plant as a security guard, adhering a gun's suggestions, he ignores people fighting on the thoroughfares and continues his normal life. Despite all this he is still hysterical of lightning and hides at a place whenever it occurs. The scene also shifts to a party where two people are talking about person named Penker. Supposedly this Joe faced a lot of problems during his non-age they bandied Penker's family being burned alive and how he survived by hiding inside a cupboard. The scene also flashes back in time when Penker's uncle leaves him at a lower class orphanage where children are abused hysterical and fed up with the regular abuse. Penker conspires with the orphans and kills all of the cruel orphanage possessors, eventually laterally he gets his father's heritage, and with its help he looks after the orphans. Back to the present Penker is a felonious leader who controls a large portion of Indonesia's loose council, and is also in charge of an army of orphans, who have been trained as killers, he devises a plan to pollute the rice force with a substance that damages pregnant women's fetuses, the legislative release of an unproven cure developed by an unidentified pharmaceutical business, is also demanded by a large number of individualities. The disagreement divides the Congress into two coalitions, one is dominated by Penker and his musketeers who are against it, while the other is led by legislator Ridwan Bari and his co-worker, Durga who draft a bill to distribute it during the party. 
Panker approaches Durga and offers a handshake, but the ultimate refuse is it making Panker angry. Latterly when Durga is returning home Panker's men capture him and his family and kill them mercilessly. In the coming scene Sanchaka hears some noises from his neighbor's room and finds a couple of goons hanging a poor lady woolen for plutocrat. Seeing this Sanchaka cannot stop himself and confronts the goons. He also uses his superior fighting chops to fluently master them. After the goons leave Woolen expresses her gratefulness to Sanchaka for saving her and her family Teddy. At night while Sanchaka is working as a security officer in the plant, an indeed lar larger group of goons attack him and beat him up poorly, presuming that he is dead. They throw him from the top of a structure, while it's raining heavily unexpectedly. When a flash of lightning occurs it passes through Sanchaka's body and wakes him up. The lightning cures all the injuries and brings him back to life the coming day when Sanchaka visits the request he notices Woolen planning with the request possessors about ways to save themselves from the goons. Just also the same goons who beat up Sanchaka before arrive at the scene and start chasing him, but this time Sanchaka has the power of lightning and he defeats them fluently. Seeing this an impressed Woolen asks him to join their fight but Sanchaka refuses and goes to work. Unfortunately the group of bandits set the whole request on fire and destroy everything. As a result of upset Woolen approaches Sanchaka and tells him that if a human cannot help others in need, also their good as dead hail these words, Sanchaka remembers his late father and decides to fight for the people. He also wears a mask and starts defying the evil groups around the megacity. During one of his fights an unknown person stabs him and takes down a little sample of his blood. Despite this Sanchaka is not hysterical, as he knows that his injuries will be healed by lightning. Meanwhile the news broadcasts that the maturity of pregnant ladies are suffering from a deadly complaint. After they started consuming the recently distributed food particulars, it also mentions that the children of the infected women will turn evil and will be the main cause of the increase in the crime rate around the country. All this is being executed by Panker and his men to earn further profit by dealing curatives to the complaint. In the coming scene Sanchaka learns to control his lightning powers and prepares a special suit for himself. He also fights against the mob groups around the megacity and prevents innocent families from being acted out in Hover. Sanchaka's new costume is nothing lower than that of a superhero's costume. He also begins assaulting the goons including violinist Adi Suleiman, a member of Penker's vast network of orphan agents in the bone, who is responsible for putting fire in the request ahead. Away Penker's sentry Aziz along with his friend dig a place and prize a secret box from it. Meanwhile legislator Ridwin meets with other government officers and claims that Penker is responsible for distributing the poison rice. Around the megacity they also decide to work together to take on Penker and approach the superhero Sanchaka for backing. After hearing his name in the news Ridwin also orders the officers to distribute the curatives to the bane on the other hand, Panker is presented with the cadaver of Adi Suleiman, seeing him dead. Panker becomes angry as he was an orphan and was being watched for by his association Panker demands that all the orphans be reunited and fight against the new superhero for what he did to Suleiman. Shortly after the orphans admit a call from their father, and start wreaking annihilation across the megacity they begin by killing the officers who dissented with Penker's plan. When one of the cutthroats is about to kill Ridwin, Sanchaka arrives there wearing his suit and defeats him. Ridwin also approaches Sanchaka and requests him to help save the people. In the ensuing scene the government officers ever manage to agree on distributing an untested cure to the people out of emergency at the same time. Ridwin receives a call informing him that the plant about to distribute the cure, belongs to none other than Panker. Hearing this Ridwin concludes that if Panker isn't stopped no bone, would be suitable to stop the phony curatives from being distributed to the people. Realizing that Sanchaka is the only bone who can stop the vehicles carrying curatives, Ridwin calls him and explains the situation over the phone unexpectedly. As soon as Sanchaka hangs up the call Panker arrives at his place with his orphan homicide army and orders them to attack him. Eva indeed though he is weak Sanchaka fights back and defeats them one by one using his powers. When Panker is about to attack Sanchaka from before Ridwin arrives there and shoots him dead. Hence saving Sanchaka away people are about to admit the fake curatives which might make them sick or indeed kill them. Realizing the peril. Sanchaka sets off on a motorbike to stop the distribution convoy, with the aid of a mysterious Lady Sriasi. Sanchaka is suitable to catch up with the distribution caravan and gets a sample of the fake curatives. He also uses his superpower to destroy every bottle of cure. 
as they live at the same frequency as each other, analogous to what he did with the securities at the morning of the movie as a result the peril is eventually prevented and all the people are saved from the deadly cure. In the final scene Penker's associate Gazel destroys a wall to discover a retired ancient grave, he also brings out the secret box from earlier and sprinkles it with a many driblets of Sanchaka's blood, which was intimately uprooted before after this he merges the body and the head raising key. Willowick a dangerous medieval legionnaire and informs him of Sanchaka's coming by calling him Gundala. The movie ends with crucial Willow ordering Gazel to manage an army of cutthroats to ensure war with Sanchaka. Subscribe to watch more scene summaries like this, turn on notifications and press the like button to support us.